Coach, we'll just take a short opening statement right. from you about arrival and preparation so far, and then we'll go oh, yeah. some questions. Well, first of all, it's an honor to be playing at Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. These guys have been phenomenal. The accommodations, the welcome, the hospitality, the food obviously has been phenomenal. Practice facilities, hotel, everything's been great. Uh, we arrived yesterday. Uh, the guys had a dinner. We had a little team meeting. Everybody was in the curfew 100% early, uh, ready to go. Everybody was early to the meetings today. We had a Teletruth Monday practice. We practiced in the Dome. Uh, there's a different feeling about this team this week. Uh, this is a playoff game for us. You can feel the intensity retching up. It was pretty good. Uh, the focus of it, uh, on the detail was, was very good today. So uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, very pleased uh, with our coaching staff, the way they're working. Uh, we have our wives, we have our family here, but everybody knows it's a playoff game and we're coming to win it. Any update on the status of Clyde? You know, Clyde's a little bit better than uh, we taught. You know, he's uh, he's off the crutches and off the studer, scooter. Uh, we're going to see if he can do something tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a day-by-day -day deal, but I promise you this, a little bit better than what I thought about last week. So he has a chance to play. I don't know if he's going to play. It'll be day-by-day. -day. Yeah, you know, I do believe that, uh, you know, when we took off Thursday, I think the coaches went home with their families Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And, and some of the guys went home and had Christmas with their families. And obviously, uh, you know, Christmas is going to be another day for us. Obviously, we're going to honor it because of his birthday of Jesus Christ. No question about that. But there won't be a lot of big festivities. It's going to be a practice day. It's going to be a work day for us. Yeah, they all play. They all, all three of them are getting reps. All of them are playing. All of them are getting ready to go. All three of them. <laughs> He's a phenomenal coach. A phenomenal offensive coach. He has a great scheme. I think the scheme plays a lot into it, but obviously he has great talent. And he adjusts his scheme according to his quarterback. Uh, Jalen is a fantastic quarterback, fantastic runner. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to stop. When you look at how John Anthony Tyrant is, the question of how he felt, I mean, how would you evaluate from start to finish? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, John had a problem with fumbling the football at the beginning of the year, so he lost some reps there, but he has worked hard on it. Fine. It's two different running backs like Thunder and Lightning. Uh, I think, I think Tyron has been the most consistent back, uh, can run the football in the middle, can get to the outside. John has the ability to break the long one. He has a little bit better speed than Tyron. And also Chris Curry. Chris has come along. Chris is a very bruising back, a dominating back. So I think all three of those guys uh, do different things. You know, with Clyde, he did everything well. I mean, he blocked well. He ran inside, ran outside, and caught the football well. But we're going to have to adjust if Clyde doesn't play to, and rotate those backs to do what they can do best. No, I don't think so, because I don't know. I don't think they know our backs. <laughs> I don't think they know what our, our backs can do like we know. And obviously, we're not going to do the same thing with the same back end every time. But we're going to switch things up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I think the transfer rule for graduate assistants uh, is really good. For graduate students, is really good. Uh, I think there are some, some cases where uh, a young man ought to transfer if uh, the situation for him in that school is not right. And obviously, on the other end, with, with coaches, we have to choose the right transfers. And obviously, we got it right, and they got it right. Two fantastic young men that got their opportunity, made the best of it. And uh, I'm proud of Jalen Hurts. Uh, I know him. I think he's a great young man. I got to meet him at a couple of deals. He has great parents, uh, outstanding character. And obviously, very proud of Joe what he's done. Those two guys are very similar in character and team players. And there was a time in college football where you didn't have to have an elite quarterback maybe to win a national championship. Yeah. Is that time over in college I think so. 
I think so. I think that, you know, I've been a part, been fortunate to be a four national championships and uh, two at Miami and, and, and two at USC, and we had great quarterbacks. Uh, two of them had the trophy winners. And three of them had the trophy winners out of the four. So, you know, they make a difference, obviously. Coach, how is uh, the world handled winning the Heisman Trophy and everything? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's been fine. Uh, you know, I think he's a little tired. Uh, when he got back, I was a little tired. We rested him last week a bunch. But I think he's fine. He's back to normal now and ready to go. Who's the best team we played? I'm going to say Alabama. Alabama and Auburn, Florida. Those three guys were very good. Not just Joe, I guess, but the team. Y'all, I mean, y'all swept a bunch of awards. The O-line just got an award. You had some time off. What did their, what did their focus level look like today? Been phenomenal. Been phenomenal. It started with me. Uh, I think the intensity in the meeting with myself and the focus uh, and talking to them about why we're here and what we're going to do and what's the expectation. That was your standard of performance. And, uh, there's not a lot of uh, free time to where uh, guys are going out and visit the town and stuff like that. We're here to win a game, and we're going to prepare. And I think that these guys know how to prepare. And today's been a phenomenal start. You said you guys have had to prepare for this. How has Dave Miranda approached those weeks in preparation? You know, he's got a lot of stuff in. He got a lot of stuff in, and uh, he's got a lot of ammunition. And uh, Dave's a great game day caller. Obviously, we can't run it all. Uh, but I think that today was one of our better days as far as technique-wise, and we've been seeing their plays. They have a lot of plays. You can't rep every play, but we've been re repping their, their top plays and uh, our guys that fit it well. But obviously with this team, you got to tackle. you got to tackle one-on-one -on -one and in space. you got to tackle Jalen. you got to cover CD, and if you do cover them, you got to tackle them. So it's going to come down to winning your one-on-ones and tackling. Yeah, I think so. I think we've been more creative on third down. Uh, we started attacking more on third down. Our third down package has been more. We, we're causing more turnovers, uh, getting more sacks. Uh, but this, with this team, you have to stop the run. There's no question that you have to stop the run first. What stands out about the job James Craig has done in having to this? Phenomenal. A plus. You know, again, on vacation, James didn't take one day of vacation. His offensive line worked out four days a week at 6 o'clock in the morning. He was with them every day. And the times that, you know, you have two hours that you can coach him, he used those two hours every time, every week. Uh, he, you know, John Robinson, who's a, a big-time consultant for him as an offensive line guy, sat in every meeting. Now, he doesn't coach him. He listens up. He came to me about, I guess, about three weeks in camp. He said, Coach, I'm going to tell you what. You have an excellent offensive line coach. He is building something special. You know, the guys got camaraderie, led by Lloyd Cushenberry and D. Lou. Uh, now that we got everybody healthy, Sadiq's playing and Austin's playing, we got some backups. Just proud of what they've done. Obviously, we got more to go, but so far, those guys have been excellent. You told us all, all season long how they were a big question mark, our biggest question mark. Yeah. Yeah, it was very rewarding. And, you know, Lloyd said, it, you know, and, and we all, all of us get that. And the good thing about it, we use it as internal motivation. And anytime people question you, if you're learning, use it as internal mo motivation, it works. So they had great leadership. Uh, Lloyd mentioned that. I think he took the offensive line this summer and said, hey, man, we're the question mark of this team. We're going to turn it into positive by the way we work. And we'll keep our mouth shut. And those guys did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, like again, I've known Steve since 1979. I was Steve's a graduate assistant coach at Mike Neese. He and I have been friends. Uh, I trust Steve, and uh, I really trust uh, him as a person. I trust him as a coach. And again, we didn't score any points against Alabama. It was a low point, and I told him, I said, "This we got to go to a spread." And he said, you're right. And I said, are we receptive? You're going to be receptive to someone coming in and teach us the spread. He said, yes, I will. When Steve tells you yes, it means yes. And uh, obviously, Joe came in. Steve worked his tail off to learn the new terminology, the new words. He calls most of the plays. He's done a fantastic job. Him and Joe have meshed, meshed perfectly. 
There's no egos with both of those guys. It's not us, us, us. It's we, we, we. They work great together. Steve has been the MVP of the whole deal. Can you say that again? Yeah. It was really important. Boy, especially at that time, we needed some middle linebackers. And, uh, you know, Jacob was the number one player in the state of Tennessee. Uh, he called me and says, Coach, I need, I need you to come see me. I got on a plane. I was there the next morning. And uh, his mom and daddy trusted us. Uh, they loved David Randa. They loved the scheme. Uh, Jacob has been one of the best players we've had on our football team. He's a great young man, great character. I'm glad we got him. about that yeah you know uh his his family has had a plan his high school coaches had a plan they're very aggressive uh they own into the rules into everything and tj is very motivated and uh it was totally legal we went through compliance we got it done that's the first time that's ever been done and uh you know what tj has come to every every football practice that he can since he's been off of uh school so it's wonderful to see. We expect other mid-year graduates to come see us a little bit later on if we do have another game. And we're going to get as many mid-year graduates at our practice as we can. I don't know yet. I, uh, about, you know, three or four or five, obviously, and maybe in January. They have to be on campus, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very important. Many times you can get in our meetings, many times you can get in an installation, learning the play, and seeing the speed of practice. I think it's important, and it's important to have mid years. You know, and I'm sure Coach Riley has the same thing. We have a next man up theory. We put 11 men on the field and we fight like Tigers and we don't blink. And I'm sure those days, that's, this is a top program. They've done a great job recruiting. I'm sure the next guy is chomping at the bits, may have his best game. So we don't even factor that in, you know, and say, hey, this is going to be advantage. It's not going to be advantage. Uh-uh. We, we, we're going. And, again, it's, it's never going to be about our opponent. It's always about us and the way we execute. What did you talk about two more guys the about the actually Here's what he told me. Here's exactly what he told me. Because I wanted to put it in. I liked it. He says, Coach, you have to be committed to it. And you have to run it a lot because you're going to see a lot of it different defense, people are going to try to stop it all different ways. So we practice it, and we practice as many looks as we possibly can. So obviously, anything that we do, I do believe he won't be surprised by what we're doing. I, but I think it's it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You know, you got to have a play on the quarterback, you got to have a play on the tailback, you got to follow the counter, not follow the counter, spill the counter, squeeze the counter, you guys got to play good inside. It's all about how you do it. Is a number one play on offense. Is there a number one play on offense, a number one run play that you have to stop? If you don't stop it, he's going to keep running at you. Last question over here. A couple, three weeks go by. You're playing Georgia for this game. How much of a challenge, how much anxiety does it create to, to try to have the same team that played Georgia play this Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, we needed the rest, first of all. I think the rest was good. I went home Thursday. I got home in my home in Mandeville at 3 o'clock, and I woke up at 8 o'clock the next morning. So I knew if I was tired, my players were tired. So we always took some time out. But I think you come in here, we're excited. We're in the same hotel. Uh, you know, you go into the dome today, and you see college football, playoffs, semifinals, the magnitude of the football game. Everybody's uh, awareness and alertness is, is heightening. I don't think there's any anxiety. There's a sense of confidence. But a sense of, no, we've got to go get the job done. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.